There are two problems that may occur with nasal prongs. Thick nasal discharge may block the flow of oxygen in the tubing or obstruct the nasal passages, making the child breathe through the mouth. This means that the child will not get enough oxygen. The child may dislodge the prongs from their correct position. There are two possible problems with the nasal catheter. Thick nasal discharge may also block the flow of oxygen when using the nasal catheter, either blocking the tubing or obstructing the nasal passages, causing the child to breathe through the mouth. There is a small risk that the nasal catheter may become displaced into the esophagus. This could result in gastric distension. There are several problems which may occur if the nasopharyngeal catheter is not used correctly. Occasionally, obstruction of the airways and apnea may occur. In these cases, the catheter must be withdrawn immediately and the airway cleared. Continuous and skilled nursing care is needed to prevent or treat these rare but potentially fatal complications. If the nasopharyngeal catheter is pushed in too far, the child's stomach may fill with oxygen. If the flow rate is greater than two liters per minute, there is a risk of gastric distension. Other less severe problems are the child may cough or gag when the catheter goes in. If this does not stop, pull the catheter back one or two centimeters. The catheter may become blocked with mucus. The dry oxygen supply can cause inflammation of the child's throat. These problems can be avoided or overcome by using the recommended equipment and following the correct procedures shown in this video. First, keep the child's nostrils and airways clear of mucus. Ensure that prongs and catheters are placed correctly. Use low reading flow meters to reduce the risk of gastric distension with the nasopharyngeal catheter. If the child is fed through a nasogastric tube, Use the same nostril for both the nasal or nasopharyngeal catheter and the nasogastric tube. And use humidification to prevent inflammation of the throat with the nasopharyngeal catheter. Both the nasopharyngeal and nasal catheters should be taken out for cleaning two or three times a day. The ends of the tubing should be cleaned out with a sterile gauze. The child should be checked to see if he or she still needs oxygen. This can be done by looking to see if the child is comfortable without oxygen and examining whether or not the original signs which indicated that oxygen therapy was required are still present. The child's nostrils should be gently cleaned out and if oxygen is still needed, the catheter put back into the other nostril.